Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bethel AME Church in Providence, Rhode Island. We are here today for an amazing and special moment, and we're just so glad that you all decided to tune in and join in with us. My name is Sean Del Bernie Speaks. I am the Senior Advisor for Mayor Jorge Aloza and the Executive Director of the African American Ambassadors Group. <clears throat> Excuse me. First off, I'm just going to um, bring to us, before I bring to us our first uh, guest, I just want to acknowledge that it is Black History Month. And what we are having today is super significant for the time that we are in and the month that we are in. So thank you all and let's welcome Mr. Keith Stokes, who is the Director of Business Development for the City of Providence. Keith. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Shondell. Thank you, Mayor Laza, the team, uh, the soon-to-be, the commission members uh, for taking this time. Uh, and as Shondell said, I can't think of a better time to have this announcement than the last day of Black History Month here in Rhode Island. Um, my name is Keith Stokes. I'm Director of Business and Development for the City of Providence. I also had the honor a year ago to work with a number of historical institutions led by the Rhode Island Black Heritage Society in designing and developing the first phase of a truth and research phase of a truth, reconciliation, and reparation process. And we were able to produce what we think is one of the most comprehensive assessments on the history of racialized discrimination in Providence and Rhode Island called the Matter of Truth Report. And if you haven't had a copy of that report, we'll make sure you have a copy of it, either in a PDF or a physical version. It provides a very extensive history of racialized discrimination towards indigenous and African heritage people starting in 1620 and carrying forward to 2020. What's most important about that report is it has nearly 700 primary secondary sources of information for further research and understanding of this history. But the purpose of today is to begin to provide an introduction to the next phase of reconciliation and the final phase of reparative justice. And it's exciting to be at this particular location, this historic church. It's one of a number of historic black churches, the early churches of Providence and Rhode Island, who were also displaced from their original locations, largely centered in what today is recognized as College Hill, but at the time would have been College Hill, or Lippitt Hill, or Mount Hope, or Fox Point. All traditional, historic African, indigenous, Cape Verdean families and communities that dated back to the 18th century. One of the great challenges we have in interpreting this history is understanding the fact that the history of racialized discrimination is something that was at the very beginning of the founding of Providence. In fact, the very founding of Providence, the founding of most communities across the Americas, were founded under two very basic principles. The taking and utilization of indigenous people's land and the use of African heritage people to work that land. And that history would carry forward and evolve into racialized discrimination that still carries forward today. And those social economic scars of disparity still impact those people of color. And it's absolutely essential that we understand that the history that we've been able to unveil is an ongoing history that still continues to this day. And the goal in a reconciliation process is to bring us together to understand and to be able to agree upon a process towards reparative justice so that all Providence residents, regardless of race, or ethnicity, or religion, or sexual orientation, have the rights to have equal access to social and economic prosperity. That's true justice, that's true equity. And much of this focus will be closing what we call the racial equity gap that still exists. So it's an exciting day, we have much work ahead, and this work will be a public process, a community engagement process, and be led by an outstanding group of men and women who will be forming our commission. But this work begins with the process of understanding this history. And what we've done, just as an example, is to provide behind me two boards that represent hundreds of documents and images that we had provided as a part of the Matter of Truth report. This board, to my left to your right, shows the former Lippitt Hill community. Lippitt Hill community would be today University Heights, and very much the shopping center that's bounded by Doyle Avenue, and Only Street, and Lippitt Street, and down to North Main Street. But before that, it was the Lippitt Hill community. And the Lippitt Hill community had one of the largest, most concentrated African heritage, indigenous Cape Verdean communities. But during the 1950s into the 1960s, the city of Providence 
like many urban cities across America, embarked upon an urban renewal program to what they believed was removing blight, but what they actually did was remove families from the historic communities. Communities in many cases where properties were owned, businesses were owned and operated, dating back not decades, but centuries. And in this image here, you see Lippitt Hill today with the University Heights in 2021, but at the end of 1962, when urban redevelopment policies in the city of Providence were completed, the entire neighborhood was demolished. Hundreds of families of color were permanently dislodged and dispersed from their own communities and homes. And this was playing out in Lippitt Hill in Providence, Fox Point, South Providence, Washington Park, Onlyville, Elmwood. In fact, at one point, the African-American community of the United States called urban renewal Negro removal. Mm -hmm. Because the feeling was, is that we were being taken from our ancestral homes, our places of work and worship for public policies that ultimately did not benefit us. And what's interesting about that is that many of these urban renewal communities of the 50s and 60s are today some of the most highly valued neighborhoods within the communities that they reside, but very few people of color live in those communities. And then to my right is a 1935 map as a part of the City of Providence archives. And it's a map that's developed by financial institutions, realtors, other stakeholders who were looking to invest in where to invest at the time, federally insured guaranteed mortgages. An outcome of the great society programs of Franklin Delano and Roosevelt was developing what would become the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, mortgage programs, insurance programs. And the way of fast tracking people out of the depression from lower income to middle income was to give them an opportunity to own a home. Because we know then, we know today, owning a house is the fastest way to build equity in economic stability and prosperity. Tens and tens of thousands of families across New England took advantage of those federally insured mortgages and loans. But if you happen to live in a neighborhood where a red line was circled around it, that neighborhood was deemed as economically unstable. It was a neighborhood that was deemed as a community that would not and should not receive federally insured guaranteed mortgage and insurance. And in a case of Providence, those red line communities are Lippitt Hill, parts of College Hill, Fox Point, Elmwood. Again, the same historic communities that have faced racialized discrimination from race riots in the 19th century to urban redevelopment and renewal in the mid 20th century and now ongoing restricted access to basic services that was uplifting most Americans coming out of the depression and then past World War II into the 20th, 20th century. So these are two of just several graphics that provide a documented and detailed history of how people, fellow Providence residents, who lived and worked and worshiped side by side with many of your own families, did not receive the basic rights simply because of the color of their skin. And this was going on in beginning in the enslavement, in indigenous people land taking of the 17th and 18th century, and it carried forward into the 20th century into the present day. So the purpose of us being here today is to create a reparative justice investment strategy so that all Providence residents have equal access to success and prosperity in this great city.